Hello and welcome back to Sussex Daily News Channel. Today we give you the royal expert's opinion. Harry Markle is traditional British pro-monarchy satire. The ongoing case of Meghan Markle against Associated Newspapers Limited, Mail on Sunday, or the Markle vs. Markle case, has reared its ugly head again. Yes, we're all so very bored and tired of it, and no one can see the point of it. Yet Meghan Markle still manages her own imitable and arrogant way to vilify the British, antagonize them, and accuse them of being mean to her. Any remote chance of her returning to the UK has been well and truly scrubbed. In the past, they may have been able to pay for some cheers from rent a crowd, and the once lukewarm cheers would probably turn into loud jeers if she is dumb enough to show her face publicly on these shores. Yes, the island that supported her financially, lavishly, for three years, where she barely paid a penny into the UK coffers, but somehow we are supposed to be grateful to her, and for what? She never paid any rents for any properties she has stayed in. So Ho House gave her complimentary rooms, courtesy of Marcus A, and then she showed up on the steps of KP and never left. And she has lived off Charles and freebies from her former best friend J M ever since. It's no wonder the duo has been called a host of nicknames from Megan, the moaning menace, and Harry, the hypocritical hustler, among other names. There are thirty-one pages in the recent filing, and it appears to be packed with the usual frivolous and churlish claims, where Megan Markle brings up unrelated topics and issues in what I can only see as a childish rant. I've seen toddlers in a playground fighting over toys behave with more civility, and manners. Both are attributes that Meghan Markle lacks. The records so far look like a rap sheet of hardened criminal, yet the case itself is full of trivial nonsense that you simply can't take it seriously. Meghan Markle clearly can't accept that people don't like her, because she simply doesn't appear to be decent or nice, and these egregious and scurrilous claims are nothing more than her screaming, "You have to like me. I'm the nicest person in the world. I'll make you like me." If the public is to blame, then it's for giving Harry such an easy ride over the years and allowing him to think he could do whatever he wanted and to get away with it. He was arrogant and stupid enough to think that his fans would follow him whatever he did, and like Meghan Markle because he did. How wrong he was, and how most of his fans were old Diana fans who have passed on or aren't buying what he is trying to sell. Most of the newspapers have gone through what appears to be a tedious and frivolous document, but there are only several elements of worth that one can be bothered to focus on. The Daily Mirror has highlighted a number of points raised, and the Daily Mail has also focused on the points that appear to be trivial and laughable. Columnists have been out in force ridiculing the said claims, with Jan Mar and Richard K calling the duo out for their behavior, and the usually sympathetic. Camilla Tomini admitting that the duo thinks they are bigger than the royal family. These are some of the points that the Daily Mirror has picked out, although many carry little weight and can be debunked at source. And so I will be dealing with a few at a time. Otherwise, we may all lose the will to live. Most of them are so petty, and the ridiculous ones where Meghan Markle seems to be attempting to look innocent by saying. I didn't hear anything, gov, cause my eyes were closed. Meghan Markle had no knowledge about her five friends giving interviews to People magazine. This old chestnut again, which we can go over again and debunk the feasibility of the statement. Meghan Markle claims she didn't know the identities of the friends until a considerable time later, whatever that means. But given that they were allegedly all close friends, they could have communicated regularly. Will Jess fess up and become Jessica the confessor? Meghan Markle states that she told her friends and members of the royal family about the letter, although she doesn't state which ones. More than half a dozen people knew the contents of the letter: Harry, Doria, two friends, her lawyer, and a member of the KB communications team. So much for the letter being private before Thomas even received it. Meghan Markle claims that the wedding generated one billion euros for the UK through tourism. That went to the public purse. Meghan Markle states that Harry has not met her father in person. That was never disputed, as Thomas Markle has said he has never met Harry. 
The real question to ask is why had Harry never met Thomas if they had been allegedly dating for 18 months? Meghan Markle had time, as she was seen jetting off on various holidays and attending the wedding of strangers in Jamaica, but she never bothered to go to Mexico. Meghan Markle claims that she organized and paid for her father's flights and accommodation and for a suit to be made for him, including an assistant, while in the UK. Funny how Doria's flight to the UK was booked late. She arrived 72 hours before the wedding, because Meghan Markle forgot to book the flights for her, yet allegedly she had booked and paid for her father's flights much earlier. Meghan Markle also claims she used a pseudonym for all the above, therefore, is that to avoid producing evidence of her claims? If Thomas Markle had a flight booked, it would have to be in his name for legal purposes. And if he was booked in a hotel, again, a real name would have to be used upon checking in. It seems improbable that she would have booked and paid for flights for Thomas to arrive a week beforehand. Yet her own mother was forgotten and arrived three days before the wedding. Meghan Markle has also claimed she had staff on hand to fly over and meet Thomas to bring him to London. Yet did she pay these people herself? They had very few staff, and it's unlikely they had spare staff to dispatch at a moment's notice to fly to Mexico. Did these staff members even exist? I'm going to deal with the outrageous and laughable claims first to debunk them. The York sisters have paid jobs, and they have always had them because they are not full-time working members of the royal family. They have patronages and are involved with charities, and occasionally assist with official engagements. The same goes for Prince Michael of Kent, and then none of them receive public funding, and all pay rent for properties they live in that are situated in the royal grounds. Their positions aren't comparable, and it was foolhardy to attempt to use their situations as a defense as to why Meghan Markle should be allowed to earn money from external sources. Meghan Markle claims that the wedding generated 1 billion euros in revenue via tourism that went to the public purse and is suggesting that we Brits owe her. Social media comments have gone viral over this spurious claim with no evidence. I wonder how the lawyer felt when they wrote such a stupid comment. It was summer, therefore it was peak season for tourism, and so hotels in the UK were busy, and flights would have been booked before the engagement was even announced for many holidays. The FA Cup final was on the same day, and thus all the hotels in the London area would have been booked up a year in advance. More people probably showed up in winter that day due to the wedding, but most seemed to be camera crews from around the world, and they wrote the trip off as a business expense. If you look at the average tourist, they probably bought a meal deal and some drinks, plus a few souvenirs that they would have done on any trip. Windsor may have had a boom for 24 to 48 hours, but that happens with all major events. Irrespective of the revenue generated, it wasn't due to Meghan Markle, which she appears to be claiming, and it's in poor taste to attempt to suggest how much she thinks she is worth. It appears to be some foolish and egotistical message to the world that she is a valuable asset, and that she contributed to the wealth of the country. Thus, she was entitled to all the privileges that she has taken advantage of. This is a ludicrous claim that attempts to justify Meghan Markle's lavish and extravagant lifestyle and spending. The sniping claims continue with a statement that the public didn't pay for her wedding, as Charles did. The public only paid for security, which was estimated in the region of several million. So yes, the public did pay in parts for the wedding, as the security costs were a huge portion of the costs, approximately a fifth, estimated on costs compared to William and Kate's wedding. As for Charles paying for the wedding, he gets his income via the Duchy of Cornwall, which has been in existence since 1337. Yet the duchy was made up of various properties and sites that had belonged to others. The root of most royal incomes goes back to the public purse, and from land that was seized centuries ago. Beatrice, Eugenie, Prince Michael of Kent, Peter Phillips, and Zara Tyndall are members of the royal family who actually earn their own money that has no ties to the public purse. The story was that Meghan Markle would contribute herself to the wedding by paying for the honeymoon. However, it looks like one never took place like the alleged engagement party that was hyped up and then was never spoken of again. Maybe Meghan Markle scraped enough for traditional British holiday for a week at Bootlands in Skegness. 
they would definitely have got the privacy they so desperately craved, and it would have been an ideal opportunity for Harry to show Meghan Markle how many of the Brits spend their holidays, as she wanted to hit the ground running and to mingle with the people. The Sun may have been running a Sunsavers code or token offer at the time as well, so there was no excuse for her not to have taken Harry on holiday. We should also look at the recent leaks. The court documents were available to the Daily Mail as they are defendants, but another recent leak that suggests that the Sussex Royal Foundation is finally winding up must have come from the Sussex camp. The company should have been wound up at the end of March, and technology as the foundation had never been formally launched. It also appears to have been trading. By that, it means it appears that the funds have been deposited and used. Otherwise, why was there a delay in winding it up? And you? What do you think about my news? Please drop us a line with your own opinion in our comments section below. And as always, come back to our channel for all the latest news on Meghan and Harry right here. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Goodbye. Meghan Harry is selling his dignity for money. They never know how to face the wall to apologize for what has caused public opinion as well as his people. Their faults are piled up, there is no end. New things always fascinate them, so they always like the charm, their relationship is not too long. The couple's way of life is extremely pessimistic and needs to be condemned.